The current generation Lexus NX has been out for three model years, but really just out for about a year and a half when it comes to total duration. And we got some updates for 2024 that make it a little bit more tantalizing, but the prices have gone up. Not, not necessarily to justify the changes, but just because it's a reflection of the current market, inflation, et cetera. So we're going to start at the Lexus newsroom in North America, but we're going to go over to the Japanese newsroom because they have more information strangely because it's a global model they used to all be produced out of japan imported into america but with this generation they started producing them all in their plants north of the border in canada with an asterisk because i believe the only way you can get the plug-in hybrid is still imported from japan the biggest things for 2024 is right here new for 2024 certain interior color offerings have been enhanced to create a seamless interior in addition, certain interior colors have been added color key elements to the front and rear door panels. But if we look at the related images, Lexus didn't provide any, at least on the North American side. So heading on over to the Japanese new room, newsroom, they have a bunch of pictures here. What I'm going to do is put on the old NX interior here at the bottom and put on a similarly designed 2024 model year to, for you guys to see the differences here. Keep in mind, this is not the same interior. We have like that little prismatic design here, and this is a def different color and different finish than what we have at the bottom. But just check out what they've been doing. So inside of the door panel here, they make this all key colored to match the rest of the interior. Here it's just black with a little bit of stitching. Also the glove box is getting that treatment. And previously, the only way you'd color around the center console was angled towards the driver, as you can see this kind of swoop around. Now it's color matched on the passenger side as well. Here it is in red, here it is in tan, and check it out. This tan color has a roof line that matches as well, which I think is pretty cool, and I wouldn't hesitate to get this color at all. And then we have a couple F-Sport colors here. It's a giveaway with the aluminum pedals, the F-Sport badge, as well as the aluminum um, trim instead of prismatic or wood or whatever. Here's the circuit red because this one right here is the Rioja red, a darker red, which I much prefer over the brighter circuit red, but that's just me. This is addressing pretty well what a lot of people complained about when the NX came out. It was very unassuming on the inside and not up to Lexus's I guess, details of what we're used to seeing. And the dash here is still a sore thumb in the vehicle. This, even though it's soft touch and it feels okay, just look how plain it is. And I know they're going for the minimal look, but they should have done something with this dash here to spruce it up for 2024 model year. Back to the press release and what is Lexus doing other than the colors? Well, at least on the Japanese models. And again, I'm assuming it would be the same for the North American models because they're not going to produce it to different specs and standards and theory across the world. All right, so they're improving steering stability and ride comfort to further enhance the taste of Lexus driving. Also, they've expanded some safety features with Lexus Safety System Plus. They're saying the steering stability and ride comfort have been improved by improving body rigidity and optimally setting the suspension accordingly. They've improved body rigidity around the front and around the radiator support. They've improved body rigidity around the rear. And they have also added uh, a rear suspension member brace that was already installed on the NX350. So it looks like they're adding it to the 250s now. And they've also adjusted the aerodynamics a little bit by changing the front and rear body rigidity. Also, they have changed the coil springs, absorbers, and EPS, so electric power steering tuning. With the NX350, drivability has been improved by improving the response and torque feeling when starting and by changing the control of the engine and transmission. That's great to see because that 2.4 liter engine is not one of my favorite from Toyota and Lexus. It would have been awesome to see the NX with a V6. Kind of remind us of the old uh, RAV4 V6 that once grace our streets here in North America. They also gave us some different wheel options that I don't think we're going to see in any images. So what have they done to the safety here? They've expanded the low speed acceleration suppression function from pre-crash safety that supports collision avoidance or damage mitigation at low speeds. It looks like they've also done some tuning to the proactive driving assist, which I just turn off in every Lexus vehicle that I get in. Okay, so what we have on the top is the new upgraded pricing. I shouldn't say upgraded, it's downgraded because the price went up. Uh, and down below is what we had for 2023. And keep in mind for the, the small amount of 2022 model years that we had was a little bit less than for 2023. It was 
about five, six hundred dollars less per trim on average compared to what we see down below. All right, so if we look at the base price here, and this includes uh, the eleven hundred and fifty dollar price or DHP for for shipping essentially on every single model on the top and the bottom, thirty nine seven five five versus forty thousand two hundred five for the base NX front wheel drive which is an increase of about 450 bucks. If we go to the plug-in hybrid this year, it's 58,655 minus 57,705 versus last year. The plug-in hybrid's gone up about $1,000 versus the year before. My favorite model of the NX and RX is actually the, the standard hybrid, the 350H. 43,805 now minus the 43,105, so a difference of 700 bucks versus last year. And then for the mass market model, the NX350, it's gone up about 450 bucks. And we're gonna shift to automotive news. Tesla grabbing early lead for the US luxury crown. They're not a luxury brand. They're a mass market EV brand. Also, you guys down below, if you disagree or agree with that statement, uh, so really, I'm not. Tesla is an outlier here, and BMW is the number one spot at 31,000 units. Definitely leaving the traditional luxury in the dust. Behind them is Mercedes at 23,345, and less than a thousand units behind Mercedes-Benz is Lexus at 23,082 units. BMW is up two and a half percent. Mercedes up over seven percent, and Lexus up by six and a half percent. Now keep in mind this is just for January. Things could have changed for February as well. We're already here in March and we're comparing these numbers. So Audi came in fifth place with 19,113 registrations, really not that far behind Lexus, which was at 23,000. And that boosted them to 38% increase compared to last January. Cadillac in sixth place with 13,000 registrations is up 36%. And in seventh place, Acura, 10,000 units, an increase of 32%. We know Acura had a really rough 2022. Volvo came in eighth place, not that far behind Acura, just a couple thousand units behind, and they were only up about 2%. Land Rover was ninth with 7,000 units. Lincoln was 10th with nearly 7,000 units as well. So I'll see you guys down below on the changes on the NX. And also if you think uh, Tesla is a luxury brand, because that's always a fun topic to discuss in the comments. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, hit the like button, subscribe for more, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.